Okay, today we're going to embark on a new study. We've done books of the Bibles. We've done subjects on our hymns we're working on. Uh, Fools of the Bible, which I just found. We'll get back to studying that again. But today we're going to start in a very important lesson. And the lesson is for the believer and for the unbeliever, for the fact is we're going to look at soul winning lessons. We're going to look at the who, what, where, why, and how. And it's going to be a serious study. And I hope it will help you out. I hope it will get you going. I hope it will be something you just don't listen to and then, you know, you put it away in the back of your brain and don't do nothing with it. I hope it excites you to do, start. I hope it excites you to keep going. Because there's nothing more rewarding than going out and doing what God has given you ability to do. And so many is not for everybody because, because of health and handicaps, you, you got limitations. But still, there is the opportunity in, if you are in a nursing home, you can witness, witness to the doctors and nurses and the aides that come into your room. As much as somebody who's got good healthy feet, a good healthy body can go knock it on doors. There's many aspects, and what we're going to look at, we're going to look at the generalness. And to start off our study, let's take our Bibles to Proverbs 11. And we're going to look at the Bible. We're going to see what the Bible has to say. We're not going to look at no book written by man. Because we don't know if a book you buy in a bookstore, you know, on prayer or so many, you don't know if that guy even does what he wrote. Let's see what the Bible has to say. In Proverbs 11.30, let's build upon our study on this verse here. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Now that winneth soul has been very, very overused. And what we need to look at is the fact is there is no Bible promise. Multitudes upon multitudes are going to get saved. You're not going to step out on the first public ministry and get millions of people saved, hundreds or thousands. You may get one, two. But soul winning is not a notch in your belt. It's not look at how many people I got saved this week. It's the process of doing what God has told us to do. And we'll see that in a minute. But the fruit of the righteous. We are to bear fruit. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So when he is likened to fruit. And we are a tree. And when it speaks of as a tree of life, we hold life. For the unsaved man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that has the Son has everlasting life, but he, he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Life is in Jesus Christ, who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we must center our soul winning upon Jesus Christ, and not for rewards not for grandeur in the church and not for you know let's make a marker of ourselves and the thing is what we're looking at right now enoch tried enoch preached the bible says he prophesied noah tried to preach to the people the bible proclaims great prophets jeremiah preached to a rebellious nation of, of judah and as far as we can see kind of a convert we're really not sure Noah, besides his, the seven people that were in his family, his sons and their wives, only eight people boarded that ark. So first of all, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that went in souls is wise. I want you to get off of thinking in your head that, oh, I'm going to be successful. You're going to find yourself that all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to have more people who are going to cuss you out in your face. 
They're going to stick up their middle finger. They're going to say Satan rules. They're not going to listen. And if you are truly serving the Lord and doing right, and any public ministry that you have, whether it's knocking on doors, whether it's passing out gospel tracts, whether it's face-on-face -face witness to someone, or street preacher, whatever it is, you're going to get to the point, as my testimony is, you're going to hurt. You're going to look at those people and they're going to reject God and you're going to hurt inside. It's going to cry to you the prayer more and more earnest. And as you grow in that, it's going to be exciting the first time you do it. But the very, very first time that you do do it, you're going to be scared. You're going to be frightened. And you just build upon there. I, the first time I did, first time I ever street preached, was the corner of Franklin and Main Street in Orange. I stood there in that corner. I had my Bible. I was ready to open up my mouth. And I went back to the car. I got enough guts again. Went back to the corner. I was going to open up my big mouth and went back to the car. I don't know how often that happened. Finally, the Lord just said, open the mouth and I'm going to fill it for you. Now, at that first point, now don't expect your entire public. you got to study to show thyself a proof on a God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. But that first time, God will step in. God will be with your mouth. And then once you take that step and once you go, keep going. Don't let people put you down. Don't let Christians put you down. And they'll be one of your, some Christians will be one of your biggest competition. You'll find Christians will be against you. As I, many, many, many years. I don't even know how many years it's been. Nine years, maybe ten. Eight. So, the first thing we see in Proverbs 11.30 is the fruit. There's fruit. It's fruit. You will get somebody. And you may not ever see him. Plan this, uh, I planted this. I planted Paul's word, but God gave the increase. It takes two people, at least, a minimum for someone to get saved. Someone's got to plant that seed. Someone has to come along and water. You may be just a, a, a seed planter. And somebody come around later on within time with the long suffering of God and water that man and help that man. And that man will get saved. Because you witnessed to him. Because you had product in that fruit. You will rejoice with that water as a seed. There's people out there going out planting seeds in people, and you may be the waterer. You may actually have someone receive Christ as their Savior. I've had that ability to happen. And it's a wonderful thing. When somebody will receive Christ right there in front of you, and we're going to look at the steps and the methods. We'll get into that afterwards. But I'm just saying it's you begin now or you continue to go. You will have fruit. And you may not see that fruit. The guy who, who, who packets the seeds doesn't ever see the seed results, but there they are. So we have fruit. It's righteousness for soul winning. It's the tree of life. There's life. There's no damnation. For those that are saved and do what God tells them to do. And then he that wins souls is wise. It's very wise to do it. How can I be smart? How can I be proper with God? Actively get involved with searching to find people who are lost. And then another ground you have is people who are saved and encourage them to grow. Encourage, they may not even know about soul winning. Churches are so dead today. That's one of the reasons why churches die. There is no soul winning in the church. Without it, a church will swivel up and die. So with Proverbs 11.30, looking at that, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Let's take our step now. From the beginning verse that we set forth, on it, let's take our Bibles to Mark chapter 16. Now Mark 16 Jesus Christ has died, he has been buried, and he arose again the third day. It is truly the New Testament by the death 
of Jesus Christ. We're still in the transition through the book of Acts from Jews to Gentiles and Jews. But the death, burial, and resurrection, which is the gospel, according to the scriptures that Jesus died and was buried, and according to the scriptures, he rose again the third day. That's the gospel. It has happened by Mark chapter 16. And just a little side note that we, verse 9, to the end of Mark 16, 20, are removed from modern Bibles. And you may have a Bible right now. You open up to Mark 16. You do not have what I'm going to read to you. The very first thing you need to do to step forward to get out there to be a soul winner is you've got to get a King James Bible, which is the Word of God, inerrant, without error, preserved by God. Because if your Bible does not have this chapter and verses that we're going to read, you know, those modern Bibles also remove study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine. The modern Bibles don't want you to do what we're going to be discussing in the next few weeks. So Mark 16, 15. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Go ye therefore, go, go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Now that is the commission to or for saved people. That is not written to the un unbelievers. He's speaking to the disciples. He speaks go. Go is a verb. It's action. It's something to do. Go. Go, I am told, is the shortest complete sentence in the English language. You can write the word go in a period and that's a sentence. That's what they say. I don't know much about English and grammar. And he tells them, preach. That's a verb. That's doing. And you say, well, what about, you know, I'm a woman. We'll get to that later. We'll get about women and soul winning and, and witnessing. But right now, the very foundation, it is wise. It is fruit to win souls. And Mark 16 tells us by Jesus Christ, go, go into the world and preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. It's that simple. It's not teaching salvation by Mary. It's not teaching Allah. It's not teaching relics and idols. It's not teaching what man says. It is teaching the merit and finished work of Jesus Christ. Not of works, these any men should boast. It's all upon Jesus Christ. In verse 16, He that believeth, the person you, you are dealing with, he that believeth, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So when you go out in whatever public ministry that you're going to set out for. And you're going to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. On how to be saved. There are going to be two aspects of your ministry. There are going to be people who are going to believe. They're saved. There's going to be the non-believer. They're damned. According, according to the scriptures. There is no choice placed on the Christian but the hearer of the word. And now when we break it down to those that believe. Now you're going to meet a lot of people who are going to come up to you and say. Hey thank you very much for what you're doing. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. And they'll have their ministry or testimony. And they'll encourage you to grow. And you'll have people come up to you. They will not believe. They will not trust Christ. They will not put their finished work upon Jesus Christ. And they'll be damned. And you got to rest assured now. One, people are going to believe. Two, they're not going to believe. That's it. Now, those who are not going to believe are many. 
for many will go to Broadway. You're going to have many people, a lot more people, who are going to go against God than a, lot, a few people, a few that go to the straight gate that leadeth into light. Again, it's not a numbers game. It's not, look how much I've done. Because a lot of times, once you go out and do that public ministry, you're going to look back like, wow, did I, anything happen? But God giveth increase. So we see you doing the work, going, you preaching the gospel, Jesus Christ. Don't get out there and, oh, come to my church. Don't go out there, hey, get baptized. A lot of times I don't even mention church, my church. When I'm out there, I, I'm not trying to get people to go to church. I'm not trying to look them at a church. I'm trying to get them to look at Jesus Christ as their Savior. Never mind church. Because if they will not believe God and be damned, I don't want them in the church. If they get saved and truly get saved, the next step they do baptism, then they're going to be, okay, let's get to church and let's do right. Number one problem with churches today, there's too many lost people in them. There's too many worldly people in there that are not going, not doing. But what we're looking at is you going and doing. There will be people get saved. And there will be many that will not get saved. But you must preach the biblical, the truth, the scriptural, Jesus Christ and the gospel. And the only way to get to heaven is to the Father by Jesus Christ. That's scripture. You cannot step out any bounds outside of that. Now let's look at another good place, Matthew 28. I try to stay away from Matthew in my ministry. It's all Jewish. But Matthew 28, 19. Again, Jesus has died. New Testament. He's been buried. And he rose again, all according to Scripture. He says in 28.19, I don't know if I told you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. A lot of people debate over that. Okay. Let's look at what we got here. Go. We saw that in Mark 16. That's that verb. You're not going to do nothing if you stay. Nothing's going to happen if you don't go. I, listen, another wonderful ministry you can do is you can send gospel tracts in the mail. Well, you got to go get the envelopes. You got to go get the tracts. You got to go and put the stamp on it. And you got to go to the to the mailbox or the post office. You got to go. Get going. And you got houses. You got stores. Anywhere. And everywhere people are to be found now keep your place in Matthew 28 let's go over to Proverbs 1 Proverbs chapter 1 and I will show you a street preacher and I will show you his message I will show you where the public ministry goes in Proverbs 1 verse 20 Wisdom cries out without. Remember that verse we read in Proverbs? It is wise to be a soul winner. Well, here's wisdom. It's cry you are crying out with your wisdom by God. You are going with what God has given you. She utters her voice in the streets. Now, for me, that'd be preaching in the street. That could be you going from a street to a driveway and walking up to a person's door. That could be going from a street to a parking lot into a store. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. That's business. That's where people do business. That's malls. You got to be careful with malls, though, that private property. But wherever the Lord will send you, anywhere and everywhere, houses and stores, where people are, go and preach the gospel. You may have somewhere where I don't have. You may have opportunities that I don't have here. Uh, yesterday we were at the Daytona 500. Sunday. 
You may not have a big auto race in your area. You may have a big football team or a basketball team or a baseball team or whatever. But use that opportunity to reach those people that were going into the racetrack, be there with gospel tracks and preaching and witnessing. Use that opportunity to witness. Again, with Matthew 28, verse 19, he says, teach. Mark said, preach. Teaching is preaching and preaching is teaching. You're not always going to have a big, loud mouth on the amplifying system. I do. But there are people who come up to me while I'm preaching. And they'll call me over and I will be talking to them with a common voice. And answering Bible questions, answer whatever they, they have to deal with. Then I'll get back with, with the PA. I pull, you know, I'm talking with them. I pull the microphone away so you, you can't hear us talking, or turn it off. And when I'm done talking with them, as far as my street ministry, I go back preaching. But preaching is teaching, and teaching is preaching. You ought to be learning, and they ought to be learning. And it says, "Tell." Preach and teach about the salvation of God by Jesus Christ. Again, keep your place in Matthew 28. Let's go to Acts 16. Acts chapter 16. We're going to see a lot of scripture. and You're going to have to learn how to open up your Bible and get into your Bible. You're going to have to memorize verses. I'm in John 16. Acts chapter 16. It's going to take a lot of preparation. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of tears in prayer. Acts 16, 31. Verse 30. And they brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, man. If you, if you can get somebody to say that, that would make your whole year. I have not yet found one person come right up to me and say, what must I do to be saved? Now, I've dealt with people and they've turned to get saved, but... But what do you do? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That's what you tell them. You tell them, Believe, and you go, we'll get into that. And it's Jesus Christ. And that will bring you salvation. you got to tell them that because they don't know. You cannot go into the public ministry assuming they know. There's a lot of people today who never even heard Jesus. Or any of the stories in the Bible in modern America. And that's becoming worse and worse as they're removing God from all over. And then another thing you got to realize. As we look at Matthew 28. The very first rule is go, be wisdom of God. Do, preach, preach what is right. And then number, well, whatever, however you want to put it. Let's put this rule with exclamation point. Big letters, bold, big font. If they don't believe, there is nothing else that can be done. It is finished. You pray. If you're not getting anywhere with this person, and he's fighting you, and he's fighting God, you're done. Don't waste any more time. Because you're not going to get someone saved by fighting it about, arguing about, grumbling about, and then get them to say this prayer. Uh, no, that's absolutely not. That's how those that, oh, well, he that wins souls is wise. Look at, all the belt, look at all the notches on my belt. And all they do is they make them say this prayer that don't mean nothing. Better leave the person without salvation then believing he has salvation and he doesn't have it at all it's what we call easy believism not everybody you're going to witness to i don't know how often you're going to hear this by me not everybody you're going to witness to are going to get saved what you do the best thing you can do is what i do is get their name and put their name in your prayer book and pray for them. You may be just a seed bearer. There may be watering to do. But never get someone just to say a prayer 
and, and okay, now I'm done. Next person. Never. And if they do believe, well, they got baptism in a future teaching. If they honestly receive Christ as their Savior, that's not it. You got to, you know, the Bible says be baptized. You got to get them in the Bible believing church. You got to get them in the Bible. You've got to take them on as a child that needs to grow and learn how to walk again. Remember, so when he's not, okay, they said this prayer, here's my notch. Next. It's never assembly line. If you were to, to get someone who will receive Christ as their Savior, now you've got to take them under your arms. Now you've got to raise them up because they become new babes, born again, new babes. They don't know anything about the Bible. They don't know anything about Jesus Christ. And you send them out in that world and some wolf is going to get them. Now the baptism here, we'll look at real quick, is to be done by a local pastor of a church. It's not usually done by evangelists. I've heard people, they witness to them, then they take them down to a river and get them baptized. And are you a pastor? Well, no. You're going against the Bible doctrine. They gotta be put under authority of a church. Now let's at, let's look at First Corinthians one seventeen. We'll keep your place in Matthew twenty eight. See, everything has scripture. First Corinthians one seventeen. This is Paul the missionary. First Corinthians one seventeen. For Christ sent me not to baptize. But to preach the gospel. We are missionaries when we're in a public ministry. Well, I'm not in Africa. I'm not. No, you're in your neighborhood. You're outside your city. You may be in another city. You may not be the pastor of a church, but you're a missionary. When you're carrying the Bible and the gospel to lost people, you are reaching out to people as much as a missionary does on, a, on another field in another country. You're doing the same work. And if somebody were to get saved as a missionary, you're to grow that, that person in Christ. In John 4, 4, 2. John chapter 4, verse 2. Let a local pastor with King James Bible believe in church do the baptizing. But that's the next step. And it says, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. So it says be baptized. So as a soul winner, we go out there and get saved. And Oh, someone got saved on the baptism. You got to follow the scripture. Even Jesus Christ didn't baptize. Paul, Paul baptized a few, but not all. Now, baptism is not the means of salvation. You got to get them to understand that. Because there's a doctrine out there. Repent and be baptized. And there are people who believe who if they get wet, they get dunked, they get sprinkled, they get twinkled, they get whatever kind of water they get. That's salvation. You you gotta know. You got to preach with the gospel. Baptism cannot save you. Baptism is a public confession that I'm standing before the church, I'm standing before my friends and family, I'm standing before this group of people, I am acknowledging I have received Christ as my Savior, this man called the pastor is going to put me under the water, that's going to symbolize death, I'm going to come out of that water resurrected as a new creature, and from that point on I'm going to serve God, I'm going to do the best of my ability according to the Bible, according to prayer and what God wants me to do. But this baptism is never a symbol of my salvation as it being the, the source. It gets you wet. And then again, you teach. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. Matthew 28. I am with you all. So when somebody has the opportunity to trust Christ as your Savior by you being there, your next opportunity is to teach them. I've been hindered there many places, many times. 
I have had most of the people who are saved under the ministry I have been in the prison. Now, I cannot go back to that prison the next day, and the, the next couple days. I could only go when I was doing the prison ministry every week. And you'll have circumstances where you cannot do what is right according to the Bible. You may be witnessing someone on, like I said, we, we went to the Daytona 500 Sunday. And it didn't happen, but let's say somebody from Texas. Let's say he outright received Christ as a Savior. There he is, and it's sure, and it's right. Well, I can't travel to Texas. I may be able to mail and phone call him, text and emails, which you cannot do with a prisoner in a, in a courthouse, uh, in a jail system. But in reality of what we are, if someone to get saved, you're to train them. Now, uh, I had had a chance. My, my father-in-law received Christ as his Savior at the church we were attending. And from that point on, I took him on and I trained him up the Bible along with church attendance. Along with learning from the church, I also trained him and also taught him with way of the Bible. So it's not, okay, they got saved, boom, next. You may have to put all your time and effort on that one person. You may not be able to go out and witness to the next. You're not a soul-winning factory. And you got to grow as a Christian. And they got to grow as a Christian as were any child. A child does certain things by certain ages. And that guy that gets saved with you, he may want, hey, let me go help you out next week. Wonderful, great. Listen, I was saved on a Saturday afternoon. Made a public confession before the church that sun, the next Sunday. At church on Wednesday and out witnessing on Wednesday. I believe there was something on Saturday. I forget what that was. And then baptized the, ne the next Sunday. And going out with gospel tracts and telling people about Jesus Christ. The very first person I ever witnessed to that Sunday when I went to church. And, and the pastor said, somebody has an announcement to make in this church. I raised my hand. I said, I received Jesus Christ yesterday as my Savior. That afternoon when church ended, I went to my dad's house. And I, my dad's the first one I witnessed to. I didn't know what I was doing. I just told my dad, you're going to hell. And I had to be grown. I didn't step from that afternoon and then boom, here I am on the street. No, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still making mistakes. And, okay, we got to change this and we got to do it this way. And this is what's most lacking in the churches today. They get people saved and they just let them go. Oh, I got this person saved in the street ministry. Well, where are they? Well, I don't know. Well, yeah. What are you talking about? You don't know. You're not keeping up with them. You may get five thousand that get saved and have none of them nurtured, none of them given formula, none of them given milk. That's in the Bible. You leave them out for the wolves. And I'm going to tell you, the biggest wolf you got is the Jehovah Witnesses. Somehow they prey upon new Christians and they bring them into their indoctrination that Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus. And Jesus is coming back, you know, and all this other nonsense that they teach. And if you sell the most magazines, give out the most magazines and all of this kind of junk. And then they become spiritual retards. And I'm not making fun of retards. But most Christians who are spiritual retards that have not grown. Is because no one took them under their wing to help them grow. And I'm one of them. The man that witnessed to me. Alright. He got saved. That's it. Boom. Close the book. 
And believe it or not, when I started serving the Lord and started stepping out and doing what the Bible tells me to do, that guy turned his back on me, and that church turned their back on me. That's just telling you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, and the biggest problems you're going to get will be from other Christians. Now, what is this growth I'm talking about? Let's look at 2 Peter. You don't need to keep Matthew. 2 Peter, verse 3. 2 Peter, and we're going to learn all kinds of other things besides soul winning. We're going to look at Bible doctrine. Excuse me. Sorry. 2 Peter 3, 18. But grow in grace. Grow in the knowledge of the Lord. All right, you got wisdom from soul winning. Now there's knowledge by growing. And the Savior Jesus Christ. And see, our Savior is Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. One of the things you got to learn, and one of the good things is when you're witnessing to people, religion is man-made. And Jesus Christ is God approved. And let's see, this is kind of weird word. 2 Peter 1 5. I'm trying to read these verses here. It looks weird. First Peter 1 5. And beside this giving, giving yourself to go to the lost and dying world, giving yourself to find a Christian that needs to grow. You thought I was talking about money. Giving time to study scripture so you can witness. You can call it from memory. All diligence. It means really making sure it's right. Add to your faith. Virtue. Strength. And to your virtue. Knowledge. There's that knowledge again. And to knowledge. Temperance. You're going to have to learn that one. When that guy is cussing you out in, in your face and flipping you off and ready to punch you, you got to stand there calm, cool, and collective with a smile. Because the moment you frown, he sees he's got you. Temperance is needed when you're knocking on doors, you're passing out gospel tracts, you're dealing with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, you're street preaching. You, you're working at a booth at a flea market or at a yard sale. You're going to need that temperance. And to temperance, patience. That's a hard word. You will go weeks. You will go months. You may go years without anybody listening to you. As far as you know. But you don't know what happens when they leave you. But right there in front of your face, what your eyeballs can see, what your ears can hear, and what your nose can smell. You may not see no rewards or fruits. Patience. And patience, godliness. you got, you got to act right. you got to do right. Uh, like I said, when I first began soul winning, I, I was new. I was smoking cigarettes when I had first saved. With Marlboro t shirts, you got to grow in that grace, you got to get godly, you got to be right, you got to have the right verses, you got to have the right Bible, you got to have the right message. There are Jehovah Witnesses out there just as much on the street as much as Bible believing Christians, and the godliness, brotherly kindness, you got to be kind, you got to be respectful, you got to be polite, yes, sir, no, sir, no, thank you. And the brotherly kindness, charity. And if these things be in you and abound, that make you that ye should neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge again of our Lord Jesus. So, when you see this list given in First Peter chapter 1, that list is needed to be the public ministry so you can gain fruit. And grow and get knowledge I'm gaining knowledge each and every time 
I've got to set new rules. I've got to do new things. Somebody comes up and does something to us. Oh, we can't do that no more. Someday, we're, we've been at this place for three or four years now. And we got to look around. Oh, you know what? It's not, it's not as busy as it used to. Knowledge is, do we go one more year or do we move ourselves? And then if we move ourselves, we may be in someone else's territory. Knowledge is, you know, uh, the opposition I get from street preaching, I got to do something. I got to think quick. And I got to know my boundary lines. I got to know the law. And that's another thing here. When you get godliness and you get temperance and you get virtue and knowledge of the law, make sure you are not breaking the law by what you're doing. Christian Law Association is a great thing for getting a hold and say, listen, this is what I plan on doing. This is what I, I, I'm going. This is you lay it out to them. Call them on the phone, write in the letter, say, this is everything I want to do. And they will help you get through and tell you, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. One of the things we did as a family, we would hold signs and get gospel tracts at the courthouse where I live. Well, according to the government law of the United States of America and the U.S. Marshals, that was wrong. Did I get upset that day when the marshals came up to us and said, no, you got to go? And I said, well, listen, we've been here. We've been here almost a year. I don't care. You got to go. So okay. Letting you guys know, I'm going to call a Christian lawyer. I'm going to see what the results are. And if I'm allowed here, I'll be back. If not, I apologize and I'm sorry. Well, with the courthouse, I found out it is illegal. So... We moved. Find out what the laws are in here. And the laws vary from, from city to city, from town to town, never mind state. So that, uh, what was it? Not faith. That knowledge, make sure you are completely. Another thing, too, when it comes to gospel tracts, by law, anything that's a mailbox, you cannot put a track in. In America. So in other words, you're going to go down your street. You cannot put them gospel tracts in their mailboxes. That's illegal. You cannot drop them. Oh, I'm walking by this mailbox. I'll just flip one in there. That's illegal. Okay. And when as I learn things like that and it comes to my pea brain, I, I, I'll try to throw those things out there. So it would help you out. So here's a list. Matthew 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you get into the public ministry, whatever I'm going to say public ministry, whatever you, you plan on doing, or maybe you don't even know yet, you got to be righteous. you got to be trying and doing right. you got to be prayed up, and your sins are got to be confessed and put under the blood of Jesus Christ. Or you're nothing more than that lost man. And then you'll be filled. And you'll be ready the next time. And that knowledge we're looking at. Here's something else too and being filled. Alright, you go out there and let's say, let's let's pick a Catholic. Because I, I was a Roman Catholic before I was saved. And you go witness to that guy and he puts you in the dirt. Man, he runs you over with a Big Mac truck. Don't get angry. Don't get upset by that Second Peter, verse 1, 5 through 8. Keep the virtues, keep the strength, keep the patience, keep the virtue. Let him bury you. Because he's not going against you, he's going against God. But take where you lost in the knowledge of the Bible. Say, you know what, okay, that guy got me on that one. I'm going to search the scriptures so the next time somebody gets me with that, I'm going to have a Bible answer. That Whatever that person put me down, and don't 
be afraid to say, I don't know. Go home later and find out what you didn't know. Please. Don't make up a story. Don't make up as you go. Say, I don't know. Pray to God. And do find out to know. And God will fill you. 2 Timothy 3.16 2 Timothy 3.16 All scriptures given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. There's that righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Take that verse to yourself and not that guy in the street. Oh, I'm going to get him because he's a Jehovah Witness. Oh, wait a no, 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 no. No. Get them so you can learn, you can acknowledge the scriptures, so you can answer them and try to give them aid to what the scriptures say. And that, oh, look at the Bible it says, it says, thou shalt call no man your father. And you go, no, 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 no. Say, listen, ma'am, I understand you call your priest a father. Do you know what Matthew 23 says? Can I show you? It is said that uh, the Catholic Church was started by, I was going to say Cornelius, um, Constantine, Alexander. Oh, it doesn't matter. Can I show you in the book of Judges, way before the birth of Jesus Christ, the Catholic Church and a priest and a young man being called father and having the idols and having the wardrobe? Can I show you? To help them see the error of where they are and what they're doing. And as for you with, with verses 16 and 17 in Second Timothy, so you can learn, so you can have correction. You may have taught somebody wrong on the street accidentally or willingly. Don't let that happen again. I had a verse, I, I say it's right here in my coffee cup here, my pen cup. I would, I would say and preach, there is none good, no, not one. I preach that. There is none good, no, not one. And one day reading my Bible, I realized there is none that doeth good. I was in error. I was misquoting the scriptures. So I corrected myself and memorized that verse. So now when I do quote Romans 3.12, it is none that doeth good. You're going to make mistakes. You are not perfect at this. I don't care if you've done it for I don't know how many years. Philippians 1.6 Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. It's a good work for you to step out and go in all the world. Now, we're going to look at health later. Health may hinder you within time. But right now, if you're able and willing, go. Start that good work. And keep doing it to as when Jesus Christ is going to come while you're doing it. With your eyes focus on him. And I don't know if this is first Corinthians or second Corinthians. This might be second Corinthians. I don't know. This is weird. Oh, it's got it. Second Corinthians eleven one. Maybe first or maybe just weird how word did that. It is definitely not second Corinthians one eleven one. So let's try first Corinthians. This might be an error based upon Microsoft Word. I don't know what it did. Let's take 11 1. That is not. Alright, scratch that out. But I apologize for that. They make mistakes. Ephesians 4 12. I don't know what that was. Ephesians 4 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. Look at verse 11. He has given some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists. That's, that's the work of a soul winner. Evangelist, missionary. And some pastors and teachers. That's what Matthew said. It's the perfecting of the work. You will meet people who are actually saved while you're out there witnessing. And they won't have the foggiest idea what you're doing. Especially if you street preach. You'll get more people coming. That's not what Jesus would do. Does not at least you judge. But you'll get people. You're going to have to explain what you're doing. You're going to have to show. you For those people that are saved and don't know. You're going to have to open up the Bible. And show them the word of God. Grow for the lost to know Christ, for the saved to go better in Christ. First Corinthians three two. I hopefully this one's right. First Corinthians three two. I don't think word likes. All right, here we go. I have fed you with milk. That's what you give a baby, milk, and not with meat. For hereto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. When you're in a street ministry, it's not the seven trumpets of the revelation. It's not the mystery of the Trinity. It's not how many animals were in the ark. Where did Cain get his wife? In the public ministry, throw those questions, those arguments in the garbage. And it's about Jesus Christ, the blessed hope that he suffered and died for your sins, that you may obtain eternal life. That's it. Any stupid questions, avoid them. Deal, if you're with a lost man, deal with their heart as a lost man, and they need to be saved, because you can teach them anything without salvation, the Holy Spirit, they ain't not going to get it. Now, if they're saved and they come up to you and they really want to know, Set up a Bible study with them. Outside the public ministry. Don't have the public ministry as your teaching. Start, a no, a no, ugh, start another ministry of training Christians. But let that not be your public evangelism. You know, the doctrine of that's not the place. And there are a lot of people who will come up with you. I had a guy come up to me the other day about, you know, Adam and Eve's children, incense. Incense. I only answered this question because we were in the car, we were getting ready to go, and it wasn't a public ministry. Had he asked me on the street while I was preaching, while I was dealing with somebody like, sir, if you stick around for whatever, how many minutes, maybe I'll sit down and talk with you, but I would probably deal with his soul. That's not the place. And you're dealing with people who are not saved. They don't even get milk. They get the, the fire preaching hell. In 1 John 2.14. 1 John 2.14. We'll close here. No. All right, First John two fourteen. I have written unto you, fathers. You know that's what you are if you're a soul winner and people get saved. You have birthed a child of God. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him. That's from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men. See, there's fathers and young men. Because ye are strong. The word of God abideth in you. There are different growth spurs. The Bible speaks as a new, newborn babe in Christ. Little children. Young men. Fathers. Paul the aged. And as you get involved and go into public ministry. You will grow too. If you don't go, there's no growth. 
you will be spiritually retarded because the Bible says to us in two places, go ye, teach or preach to the world. The gospel, Jesus Christ. And that's why I hope these videos will set out to do, to help you to learn and to grow. And to witness to lost people and to grow Christians. 